So, um, hello everybody. Uh, and uh, first up, I really, uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm very, uh, I really appreciate uh, to be here today. And I, uh, it's also very great uh, for me to see that we have such a crowded uh, place um, and so many people came here to learn about Bitcoin and to, uh, uh, yeah, to, to meet the, the, the people in the Bitcoin world. Um, uh, I remember last year, it was also uh, a quite a, a crowded conference and this is always um, great to see. Uh, so uh, today uh, I want to speak about a very critical uh, topic and a very exciting one. Um, we're going to talk about mining, why it is, uh, why it is uh, needed, and, uh, and also at the end we're going to talk about the opportunities um, that you can have uh, as an investor um, uh, or as a miner um, to make some uh, profit or, uh, um, yeah, get rewarded uh, by doing so. And uh, I'm going to start with the very basics. Uh, I'm going to start by, uh, with um, explaining the, ter the term blockchain and come from the, from the top down, uh, come from the higher level. Uh, first uh, look at blockchain and then uh, go down deeper to uh, why mining and blockchain and then uh, go to the opportunities. <clears throat> because also a lot of people are here to learn about blockchain itself, um, which is, <laughs> I mean, right now, blockchain is just a huge, uh, everyone is talking about it in the finance world, and there's huge conferences everywhere. So uh, let's get started directly. Um, I just need to get my clicker here. All right. <clears throat> So yeah, um, what is blockchain? Uh, I think, um, simply put, uh, I, I find the the, uh, the the really the most precise and best definition of blockchain. I really always uh, use the quote of uh, Eric Schmidt, the former uh, Google CEO, and he put it very simple. There's two two things. It's a blockchain is a digital good that has two things, um, and both have to. Uh, uh, to come together there. One is the immutab immutability uh, of this digital good, and the second thing is that uh, it's, uh, it's duplicable. So it's duplicable, uh, uh, but also um, not, cha um, not uh, uh, it's immutable, uh, but also um, duplicable. And if you look in the digital world, you don't have that uh, very often. For example, take a, de a decentralized database. Decentralized database you can duplicate, yes, very good, perfect, but uh, you, can, you can manipulate. You can, without uh, any problem. You just take it, uh, copy it, and, uh, and then you just uh, entry the, the uh, you just change the, uh, the data inside and no one would realize. In the blockchain this is not possible. And this is the, this is the, 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 the very key point to have these two immutability and, um, and uh, duplicability uh, together. <clears throat> we uh, are deciding between uh, public and private blockchains. Um, simply said, I, uh, um, uh, public blockchains are used in a, for a selected group of, of people. For example, co companies uh, get together and use the blockchain as a, uh, as a layer, a uh, common layer. Um, for themselves and do doesn't open it up for, for the, the public. Um, and uh, public blockchains are just open for everyone and everyone can participate. Uh, of course, the difference of uh, each side has benefits or disadvantages or not necessarily, it's just different things to look at. Uh, public blockchains are just, uh, uh, you have more decentralization, it's uh, open for everyone. And um, yeah, you see here a list of of the differences, uh, uh, it's just because those entities have uh, different in interests. Businesses, for example, they they uh, they are fine with uh, restricting the the, the, the blockchain um, and not open it up to everyone, and but therefore have more control over the blockchain. The public blockchains, no one controls, for example, but businesses want to rely on that uh, what they have they store their 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 data on they control and they. They um, can change things if something goes wrong. Um, yeah, now coming uh, to uh, uh, digital currencies, and uh, of course, 
uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin and all the others uh, that you know. And uh, yeah, uh, digital currencies is a perfect example and uh, the biggest, of course, uh, for public blockchains. Um, uh, because uh, Bitcoin, I mean, that's how everything started with, bit, with uh, Bitcoin, uh, um, the Bitcoin blockchain. It's the most secure right now and the biggest one. And uh, in general, the digital currencies form a good example of a public blockchain. And it is an ecosystem where each is, uh, all, uh, everyone is, everything is going hand in hand. The exchanges are bi binding the networks, miners are securing it, and the users are vitalizing the network. This is the kind of um, uh, uh, high-level uh, perspective on, on the whole uh, digital currencies. Um, on all digital currencies, on most of them, you have these uh, unique features. And of course, uh, Bitcoin is not, a, um, it's not special here. It's uh, sharing exactly these. Um, the, just uh, roughly, I mean, there are so many uh, cryptocurrencies, altcoins, but the, really the giants right now, um, or the biggest ones uh, are, I mean, the, the by far bigger one, uh, Roger said it before as well, of course, not, it's not a question, it's Bitcoin. It's a um, uh, $15 billion market cap right now. It's by far the most secure chain because there's most mining power behind it. Um, and then we also have Ethereum, which has some, uh, also some very uh, big, exciting features and uh, uh, it's, it's quite different in a, in, a, in a lot of ways than Bitcoin. Of course, there are now a lot others I could, I could call as well. Uh, I don't, I just p picked out these two uh, and uh, by just uh, giving the two examples, but I could e equally also say uh, Litecoin or, or Dash or Monero. We had a, uh, there's a great talk about it also and uh, there's a lot of innovation in this market. Um, so now the big question is why do uh, these cryptocurrencies or in general public blockchains need mining? Um, why do these people that validate the transactions, uh, 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 why, why is it justified that they are earning money or why do you need this? The answer is because of the decentral decentralization and because of the decentral nature of the cryptocurrencies. No one, it's, no one has the power to influence these, and this is exactly the philosophy. Um, and because of that, you need a decentralized uh, verification mechanism. And this is exactly uh, what the miners are about. They are validating the transaction, everyone can participate, and um, they get rewarded for that. And for example, in Bitcoin, uh, there is uh, every, around every 10 minutes, uh, a block is uh, found by the miners, and the one who finds the block gets 12.5 Bitcoin. And um, yeah, uh, there's 1,800 Bitcoins every day and uh, you can calculate, I mean, Bitcoin is nearly at $1,000. Uh, it's quite a lot of money that is uh, every day put out to all, of, all the miners and uh, that gives the, 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 the big monetary incentive why miners mine and why it is necessary. And of course, uh, now people are coming and say, hey, why, why is it really necessary? Or it costs also a lot of electricity and energy is burned by that. But this is the price you have to pay for having a decentralized um, currency uh, like uh, Bitcoin or the others. This is really the price you have to pay. And whether that is justified, the market decides. And um, it's... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big innovation and uh, people realize, oh, it's really, it's really work. So instead of, for example, looking at uh, MasterCard or Visa or they have their, their central spots where they val validate their transactions, they, they don't have that high electricity bills, but you have all the, all the you have a central, you have, you have it all together at their, at their main um, data centers and in Bitcoin you just have it distributed everywhere. Um, just a brief look on the uh, technological side on uh, Bitcoin mining. Uh, we started uh, Bitcoin uh, when uh, Satoshi started mining. Uh, he used his computer with the CPU. Then very quickly people came and used, uh, found a way to optimize the algorithm for the graphic cards. Uh, and um, they were much better uh, doing that um, because of their, uh, because of their, their nature and uh, how they are um, built. 
Uh, and uh, then, of course, more technical people came and built uh, FPGA modules. Uh, they were a bit better than the GPUs, and then the big jump came from the FPGAs to the ASICs. And right now, of course, the ASICs is not, it's not one thing. ASICs are getting better and better. We're reaching the uh, smaller and smaller nanometer sizes, and uh, the innovation is, is, uh, keeps growing. But in these steps, from the FPGA to ASIC, it was just it was a quantum leap, so to say. And, um, but yeah, in innovation is continuously ongoing here because there's a lot of money at stake. It's 1,000, as I said, 1,000 Bitcoin, 1,800 Bitcoins every day. Um, the market right now for specifically Bitcoin mining uh, can be classified in two categories. Um, there's home miners and there's uh, the large scale mining operation. And uh, home mining was a, a big thing um, at, the, at the start, especially when the CPU and GPU mining was there, because people could use their, imagine that, I mean, everyone could use their computer and make money. Um, uh, and uh, I always tell this one story. I, uh, there was one guy in, uh, in England who, um, uh, one, uh, at one morning, he just sat on the table, had breakfast, and read in the, in the, in the newspaper, uh, Bitcoin now traded at more than $200. And uh, he was just crazy. He was jumping up and said, what? $200? And then he remembered that he mined with his own laptop uh, a bunch of Bitcoins uh, earlier. And then he looked back in the wallet and, um, and uh, saw actually uh, how much Bitcoin he mined. And he mined a, a couple of, uh, I think, uh, uh, it, more than uh, tens of thousands of, of bitcoins, and he was saying, "Wow, wh wh how crazy is this? And uh, um, how to get this uh, this bitcoin back?" And then he realized, "Oh, um, I put it into the, tr the trash at one point because I just didn't realize it, uh, it's worth it." And uh, and then uh, it was a big story I, um, in the news, and uh, and I think he he then collected uh, money for the investors to really dig in the into the waste uh, dispensary. Uh, and and uh, trying to find the, his laptop where, where he mined the coins. And uh, yeah, uh, I, he, they, didn't, they didn't find it. Um, <laughs> so that was just a, a, um, a looking back in, in those days. And of course, I mean, yeah, also when the ASICs came, people ordered the ASIC machines and plugged it into their home. It's just a, it's just a great experience, also people um, had their own uh, uh, home uh, mining farms and, um, and did mining. And they, did, uh, they bought uh, the mining hardware from the manufacturers, they, they installed uh, the hardware from normal accessories, and uh, they mostly used the community uh, software. Um, the large-scale mining uh, part was at the beginning not so much existent, but grew, of course, a lot, and uh, by now is the by far the most dominant uh, part of the, the mining market. And that happened because um, companies set, took places on the, re, were really searching for the uh, places on the world where uh, the electri electricity is minimum and um, they have, uh, yeah, uh, they really were searching for these electricity sweet spots on the planet and, uh, and decided to make a large farm there. And um, by doing so, of course, they could use all the benefits of economy of scale and um, were, had quite a lot of advantages. Uh, and the bigger they got, the more advantages they had uh, compared to the home miners. So um, these are two examples of, uh, of uh, two large scale farms. We have one, uh, th that's the uh, Enigma uh, farm, it's a GPU mining cluster and uh, of us we have in Iceland and the, uh, below we also, it's, an, it's an, a Bitcoin ASIC mining uh, farm. <clears throat> and uh, the difference here between the home miners is, as I said, the economy of scale and um, yeah, just uh, massive optimization on the infrastructure side and also there is uh, custom, hard, custom software, optimization software developed. I will talk later uh, uh, briefly about it. Uh, that can, uh, that way we have further benefits of it. <clears throat> yeah, so now having all this uh, said, um, the, the, the key question I always hear is, I hear, I, le I, I read so much things about mining on the, uh, uh, in the uh, internet and people are all saying it's, it's not profitable and it's very 
difficult. Where is the where is the thing here? Um, I I cannot say it's it's by definition profitable. But if uh, if it would not be profitable, no one would do it. So um, uh, I I think summarizing, uh, I can say, mining is a hard market, and you have to be really. Uh, the top one, and we, you need to be very wise and make the right decisions in order to uh, make a profit on that. And, uh, and, if, and you can burn yourself very, very easily. Um, and uh, it's not so easy as it seems. But let me summarize here the key points um, you need to know about mining and what you really need to know in order to, to make a good uh, decision um, on a mining investment. Mining is categorized, or the, the most efficient point uh, in mining is to have the highest efficiency. Because if you have the highest efficiency, you can continue to mine while others uh, cannot uh, cover their, their costs anymore and have to drop out. And if that happens, you, of course, increase your market share and uh, make, a even, make an even higher um, uh, profit. And uh, the efficiency can be categorized in three parts. We have the hardware efficiency, where it comes in the chip level uh, and the machine level. We have the, um, the infrastructure efficiency, where, of course, the economy of scale is important and uh, um, the software monitoring and all that, oversight of all the facility. And uh, very critical as well, and not to, oversee, to be overseen, is the electricity rates. Because this is also a scaling factor. If you double your, your capacity, you have double your bill by the same, uh, if you have the, the, the same electricity conditions. Um, so those are the three points. And um, now here we see a, a very simplified model of, uh, but it show, it's, it's very simply, simplified, but it shows very well this dynamics, what I just uh, explained. We have three kind of efficiency classes uh, in miners. We have the, the, the blue line, the highest efficient, uh, the miner with the highest efficiency. The orange <coughs> one is the miner with the medium efficiency. And we have the green one that has the lowest efficiency. And now we are, we are seeing on the, um, on the vertical uh, axis the, the cumulative return. And on the horizontal axis, we, we see the time. And we are now assuming that each of those three miners have the same market share. And, uh, and we're assuming that the profit is declining over time. And what will happen? And what you see there is uh, right in, uh, at the beginning, uh, the green line starts to in, uh, stops to increase. Why? Because at one point, the green one is the first miner that really feels if the profitability is dropping. Because he's the first one that cannot cover his bills. Because he has the lowest efficiency. So. Uh, Instead of continuing to mine in depths, he has to drop out and needs to, uh, to turn down his miners. So he stops, his cash flow is constant, there is no profits anymore. If that happens, we have the orange line, uh, looking at the orange miner and the blue miner, get a larger share, obviously, and they get a boost in their profits because they have a larger market share. The green one is already out, and uh, now they share the market two-thirds. Two uh, th those two share the whole market, and not three anymore. So they, they have a boost in the profits. And um, then at one point, the, uh, the orange one also has to drop, drop out uh, because, it's not, uh, because he, he's not economic anymore. And uh, then he has to drop out. But the, but the blue one has the highest efficiency. He can continue and he gets another boost. So he's the clear winner there. And he's the one that makes, makes the money in the end. <clears throat> Maybe the others as well. But the green one, of course, has the, has the, uh, the, the blue one has the by far uh, best chances and uh, has the best position. Um, to reach this efficiency, I, uh, I uh, gave the three uh, important points um, that, that matter. Um, for one point was the uh, eco um, economy of scale and also infrastructure optimization and uh, software management tools. And uh, I just want to, uh, uh, don't, don't want to go into the detail, but you, what you see here is uh, Genesis Hive. It's uh, our um, in-house uh, software that we use for our farms. And um, we also license this out for large-scale uh, other miners that uh, would like to have a, a, a software and a tool in order to maintain and monitor their large operations. We only do this for large miners, so it has to be more than 1,000 machines in the mine. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I, uh, this is uh, Genesis Hive. I think is, is really optimized for that. There is a lot of solutions that where you can control your five to ten rigs easily. But if it comes really in the thousands, you really have a kind of uh, uh, you, you, some problems emerge that uh, you don't have in a small scale. For example, where are the rigs that might may, might be down now, or where is, for example, uh, where it is is it getting very hot in the farm? You can see that, for example, Hive offers a, a, a gradient map, a, a thermal map, where where is the mo um, the hottest uh, parts of the farm, and uh, so that the engineers and maintainers directly see where it's getting too hot, and uh, can optimize it. Also, for example, there's frequency tuning and uh, auto frequency tuning involved, so the miners get optimized uh, automatically. As said, I don't want to go into the detail, but maybe this is interesting if if you have a large scale farm. We are using that for our internal purpose. And it was just designed at the beginning just for us, but we license that out um, right now. Um, so if you have the, those optimizations on the, on the side, uh, on the um, uh, infrastructure, there is another interesting point that we also um, uh, offered uh, from the beginning. I mean, Genesis Mining is now operating since end of 2013. Um, uh, uh, just on a side, we have nearly around 500,000 customers, and uh, w what we uh, offered um, uh, since the beginning on was uh, something that's called the auto trading uh, functionality, which basically, uh, for a given mining algorithm, as you know, I mean, there is so many uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. It's more than a thousand uh, right now. Uh, so uh, each cryptocurrency is having their own uh, market capacities and uh, communities, and uh, you can um, now uh, go more advanced, and uh, you can basically do portfolio optimization on the, on the coins to mine. Um, so you can, uh, you can just look what coins you want to mine, and you have the option to distribute your hash power on these coins on, uh, and mine other coins, but also you can mine the other coins and then change it back to Bitcoin and then get, a, get more profitable solution uh, um, uh, out than, uh, for example, mining one coin directly. So you can mine a lot of coins and then convert it back to this one gold coin that you want to have and increase the efficiency. So you, you use the whole opportunity in the whole alt altcoin market that you have. Of course, it depends on the algorithm. So with Bitcoin, uh, with SHA algorithm, there is Bitcoin. For Script, there's much other algorithms. And for X11, there's others. This is getting a bit technical, so anyone who has a question on that can uh, ask me anytime. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, um, it's, it's clear what I want to say with this. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there's other uh, opportunities. Um, so for example, Genesis Mining was the, this one other, I mean, there are also other providers, but what Genesis, what we are doing is we offer all these three benefits uh, that you have in mining, uh, that, that you need to have in mining um, uh, to, to be competitive. We have these large scale operations all over the world and we are now offering um, everyone to start with small amount of money to continue uh, to, to, to get into the mining and use all the economy of scale and all the benefits, uh, cheap electricity rates, etc. Of course, whether that is profitable, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, Jesus, I cannot say. It's, there's also risk in mining, obviously, but we, ben we, we offer all those large scales and economy of scale and benefits to already the small people. Um, I think besides that, no one would ever be able to be, have any chance in getting into the mining with, for example, $20 or $100 or, or even a million dollars. Um, the, the, the market is, by, is already developed so far that if you want to really play in this game uh, as a single entity, you have to put down, you should really put down 10 million or, or above in order to, to make sense. <clears throat> but we have expanded our facilities over the years and we are at this stage and we're offering everyone to participate. Um, that's the one angle. And the other angle is for large scale, uh, high net worth individual investors that want to go in uh, or, or institutional uh, in investors, uh, we have um, uh, created the Logos Fund. It's the first uh, regulated um, uh, Bitcoin mining fund. Uh, was uh, um, found and started in June uh, last year. Um, the minimum investment is uh, is two hundred thousand uh, 
uh, euro or 200,000 US dollar in the uh, American side. And um, uh, that makes it uh, possible for people to leverage in, on Bitcoin and also buy uh, Bitcoin mining as a security. Here is just the historical performance of, uh, of the Logos Fund over the, uh, since in inception. So we started 2016 last year. Um, and we have, uh, uh, you see uh, on the blue line, you see Logos performance. And uh, on the red line, you see the Bitcoin um, price. <clears throat> what you can see is that, um, I think the, uh, the conclusion out of this chart is that Logos offers, a, here in this case, you have the upside of, of the Bitcoin price, um, but you don't have the, the high volatility and this max drawdown that you see, for example, here in the middle, um, where the Bitcoin price uh, dropped quite a lot. So um, th I think that's, that's very interesting. And of course, mining offers this flexibility that you are not really completely exposed to the Bitcoin price, because even if the Bitcoin price goes down, um, you on, you're on an ongoing basis, you earn uh, your mining rewards. And um, that makes it, of course, uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, it's very, really comparable to gold mines, having gold mines. Um, if the gold price goes down, um, your gold mine can still um, be very profitable and, uh, and get some good returns. Yeah, uh, to round it up, I think, and looking into the future now, um, just by what, what I'm seeing and what we are seeing uh, uh, is that, I mean, the demand of Bitcoin is, uh, and other uh, currencies, but uh, particularly uh, Bitcoin is just getting more and more. More people want to get in the game, um, but uh, there's less and less Bitcoin uh, that are mined. Um, and uh, it's actually, it's, uh, there's only 25% Bitcoins, tw uh, less than 25% of all the Bitcoins that are still mined until uh, the year 2140. And um, this is just uh, creates a very exciting uh, um, situation where the big investors are either buying on the exchange, but when they buy on the exchange, the price is in, can be influenced a lot, obviously. So they, they buy OTC, for example, from the miners, or they mine them, uh, or they just have these huge mining operations. But um, yeah, uh, the time is now because uh, there's only 25% left and uh, now a lot of people want to get in and want to get these 25%. And uh, this is very exciting. And of course, the other thing, we all know the economics. Um, if there is increasing demand, but the scarcity is getting higher, uh, that usually economically leads to a higher price. And um, that, of course, makes it even more uh, interesting for, for people uh, uh, to get in. So if you want to start mining, I think uh, now is the time. Every day counts, and uh, uh, I hope I could uh, clarify uh, some uh, questions and uh, share some light into this exciting mining market. Thanks a lot for your attention.